All right, so we're doing I'm in a car. It's been a while, actually. It's been probably two weeks, maybe even three, since the last time we did one of these. Um, this is, I think, episode number 41. Oh, that's getting up there. Yeah, it's getting up there. So thanks for doing this. I got John Mills on the show with us. Hi, guys. Um, so normally we start off, we do a little piece around uh, a little intro, kind of sure. summary. What's yep. your story? Where, where, you, where have you come from and what are you up to these days? Well, as you can tell by the strange accent, I'm not from around here. I'm not Australian. Most Canadians think I'm Australian, but I'm not. I'm a Londoner, but I had to change the way I spoke because you guys couldn't understand me. So, well, is it, confused. Isn't, uh, didn't you guys all send Australians? Like, isn't, didn't Australians become I Australians think, because you guys made them prisoners and sent them away to well, Ireland? I think the UK just basically went over to every every single different continent and took over and then decided to give people territories but that's a different conversation right? <laughs> well what's so, what's this palm all about isn't it prisoners of the mind mon- yes palm you're right yeah prisoners of the mind okay, you're right yeah okay, so okay, anyway okay. it's not something we're very proud of not, definitely not something i'm very proud of anyway <laughs> moving right. on i'm obviously from the uk um i met my now wife jenna matthews in my gym running my second business personal training business in london uh, she convinced me to come to Canada and I convinced her to become a trainer and we now run JM training here in uh, Guelph We've been here for well, I've been here since 2011 uh, Two years I couldn't work. I tried to volunteer as much as possible went from running my own business in the UK to not working for two years Which crucified me because they messed up my immigration process. Oh crazy. But whatever we're here We're about four years old and uh, as in the sense that the JM training is four years old And we just opened the fitness junction here in Guelph as well and we work together to try and help help people uh, live a healthy, balanced lifestyle because that's what we're all about. Awesome. So, um, you came from London in what, 2010? 2011, September 2011, I remember very well. <laughs> yeah? Because I moved in with my uh, my now wife's uh, mum and dad, believe it or not. Oh, nice! Yeah, because we, you know, we figured we'd only be there for about eight months. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like we saved some money, I sold the business in the UK, and then we'd like, you know, we'd save some money, and they're, they're lovely people, so you, know, you can do that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 18 months later, I'm climbing the walls because <laughs> <laughs> they're lovely people still but like it's 18 months later it's 18 months later so yeah um, but no that you know what they say about sacrifices and uh, and investing in yourself like it was well worth it like I love London um, but I was ready for a change met Jana and I could just see that working as trainers together was going to work really really well uh, and um, and now the business is flourishing and we're really 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 happy we're doing something we love doing cool there, there was something you just touched on there that I think um skimmed over quick and yeah. when it just hit back absolutely but yeah this idea of sacrifice absolutely so when you mentioned sacrifice you know a lot of times um, I've anybody I've ever talked to that's you know become or is what people would perceive and even in their own skin successful yeah there's always a story of sacrifice absolutely and yeah. I think a lot of people have different views on what sacrifice is and I think there's a lot of people out there today that don't necessarily understand the value of sacrifice yeah because it really is necessary. Yeah. So, what was it for you? Well, I mean, if you look at that situation from my, from that point of view, like somebody who's earning good money, running a personal training business in the UK, uh, you know, going out on a whim and thinking, okay, I'm, I'm going to put every all my eggs in one basket. I love this person. We co- we've got to make it work in the country. Um, and I'm going to take. I'm going to take a chance and go to another country and hope that I can create the business that I visualize uh, with my wife, my, my to-be wife. There's lots of risk, there's lots of sacrifices there. Yeah, I mean, you're going over another continent. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving my family behind, I'm leaving my friends behind, I'm leaving my business behind. It's a huge sacrifice, right? Um, but, like, if you make those sacrifices in life, which, in life, which I learned, like, quite some quite tough lessons when I was younger. I had depression when I was younger and um, I almost sacrificed my life. And I think that's the ultimate sacrifice is that I almost gave up on life. Um, and I find myself, you know, where I am right now, um, I could never have dreamed of having a studio or running a personal training business or empowering others to make changes because I was, like, someone saved me. You know, every, every, every day I'm on this earth is a present that someone else gave me. So that's the ultimate sacrifice, right, is to come back from that and to, to go, you know, what's my purpose? My purpose, I, I feel like my purpose was to be, to be here to help people but to be happy and to be healthy and to try and live my life. As, as and, and be a leader and, and, and be the person that I need to be for my clients and the people around me to respect and look up to and so hopefully empower and, and help people with a story right but yeah that's you awesome know. well I mean even in that explanation um, something I'd love to just kind of touch on quick is you know we uh, uh, entrepreneurship uh, yes. you know Darren Hardy wrote a cool book 
called the Entrepreneur Roller Coaster. Right. And it's all about the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. Oh, yeah. And yeah, and then there's these huge highs some days, oh, and there are these huge lows others. Yeah. And uh, very rare is it like an even keel no type chance. of day to day experience. No. So uh, I hear a lot of people, uh, especially when they're growing their businesses or when they're wanting to do something new or they've stepped into something new. Yeah. They, you know, they go through a dip where, you know, anxiety, nerves, fear, depression Mm -hmm. becomes a reality for them. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes it's difficult when in those moments, even for myself, to like see the light. Yeah. You know, even right right now we have a company that, you know, when we were 12, 15 people, we were rocking. We had a great culture. We were, you know, clients are happy and now we're, you know, 28 people. It's a different beast altogether. Absolutely. And I got to change the way I'm doing things in order to be good at this. And I'm like, holy shit, this is a lot tougher than I thought. It is, yeah. So you go to the extreme of like, you know, thoughts of taking your own life. Yes. I think there's probably a cool story there to like help people understand that there's an opportunity to get out. So how did you get through that? Well, I mean, this was when I was 20, I was 25 years old. So we're talking before I even became an entrepreneur. How, um, holy, well, how old are you now? I'm 39 years old, 40 years. No, well, almost, almost 39. So we'll have to get into the nutrition tips in a bit. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, you, you look good, man. <laughs> I started living again at 25. So basically, I started one year old at 26. How about that? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so like in, in the terms of like when you talk about getting over depression, that's a whole different beast. Um, I think finding your purpose uh, helped me, you know, you know, hitting rock bottom. And realizing that, wow, like I'm not here because I chose to be here. I'm here because someone else gave me, at the time, it wasn't a gift. I had to realize it was a gift. And then, what am I going to do? How am I going to make a difference with what I'm doing right now? How am I going to be happy? Because the most important thing is to be happy. Uh, And then how am I going to bring the right people into my lives in order to help them and help the people that may be suffering from similar things that I was suffering from? And and exercise really was uh, something I lost as a young athlete and something that really um, gave me life again. Right, really gave me life. So, in, as in terms of an entrepreneur, um, and you talk about sacrifices, to go back to your point, yeah, like and, and anxiety. I still get anxiety. I still like like we just opened our, we, you know, we were running a nice little small personal training business, and then we decided, well, we're going to branch out and we're going to open our own fitness studio. We're going to bring stu- you know instructors in. We're going to have another member of staff, uh, and then more square footage, with that overhead kind of responsibility anxiety goes up stress levels go up managing that and managing the business uh, are two different things and pr- providing the best service you can so there's a lot of stress there's a lot of anxiety and it, and it, and it isn't it isn't just plain sailing people see me and Janice post and oh, they're away again they're on holiday well that's how we relieve our stress you know because we work seven days a week like I'm sure you do even when you're not in the office you're working you're working out marketing strategies you're working out how, how to evolve the business and how to keep you know keep keep improving uh, so you need that time and that's another way to manage stress and, and to, to to be a successful entrepreneur is to make sure you take that time I see so many people drive, drive themselves into 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 the ground I got a CD in here from Robin Sharma and uh, it's talking about the similarities of uh, leading ourselves and like Olympic athletes to be the best in the world and how like an Olympic training regiment actually has rest as part of the regiment yeah 100% but when we're leading a company or leading ourselves we don't consider no. the idea that rest is required in order to be peak performers no I talk to so many entrepreneurs and so many successful people I would class them as more successful than me and I'm or us and I'm looking at them and I'm like you need to take a break like there's some of them are my clients and I'm like guy like please just like give yourself some time off take your family away because this isn't healthy for you like yeah. we're talking about like when we help people in our, in our job we're a lifestyle coach so we're not just personal trainers and nutritionists we're we're trying to help them manage their lifestyle so we delve into you know sleeping uh, obviously eating training but also when was your last break and how, and how are you at your most productive right now? Not only physically, but mentally. Without having a break. Yeah. And I, by the way, I love Robin Sharma. Like, yeah. he, I just love seeing Robin Sharma. So, quick shout out to Robin Sharma, John Mills, Rob Marie. I'm, I got a one actually for you. I'm going to tag you in a tweet for this video. Um, but I know you just turned into a ski instructor, and I want to learn how to ski. I'm a snowboarder right now. So, yeah, I got $1,000 if you're willing to take me out for a ski instructor half day just so we can hang out in some uh, ski lifts. Anyway, that's so amazing. Ran, random note: uh, If you're willing to do it, that'd be epic. <laughs> uh, but anyway, coming back to the task at hand. So I mean, um, it, it, it's really interesting though because in in a lot of these interviews I've done, uh, people have talked about the idea of when it comes to being successful, really breaking down things into simple things, and we all know them: rest, exercise, good food, mm-hmm. as like the kind corner, of cornerstone yeah. fundamentals before 
our mind can really kick into high gear and, and have the ideas and that kind of stuff. And I think you've, you know, you just referenced that idea mm. really, really fast, but I think it's really core to the whole idea of success. 100%. Like if you're not looking after yourself and say you are your business, uh, then how long is your business going to last? Yeah. Like seriously, like if you're a one man team, uh, like I see people day in, day out, they're driving themselves so hard but like if you're not like it's like a car if you don't look after the car it's going to break legitimately so it's exactly the same thing and and science and then you have a bunch of and you grow the business you have a bunch of people relying on you like stress and anxiety goes up and if you don't take those breaks then you could end up failing those people too right so yeah like so yeah so another thing I want to touch on then quickly just based on what you're talking about this idea of like a part of your purpose not only empowering other people but making sure that you're centered and happy yeah, I mean, my initial purpose, I think, like, your why can change throughout your life. I mean, but, and I think you, you talk about why a lot, and I always talk about why. It's something that, that's pretty much the core of who I am and who we are as, as Jam Training as well. Is that why, why what is your real reason and uh, for doing what you're doing right now, right? Whether it's, you know, in work or, or whatever else. Um, and, um, and so my purpose when I was younger was to want to be on this on this earth it was that simple was to want to choose life to get over depression to understand it and 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 live with it but also to try and overcome it yeah and then be happy and understand what it who i was and where i was going and what i needed to do uh, in order to help myself live a healthy balanced life and then that changes right because obviously then you know you, after a few years you realize okay now I can do this okay yeah, so then I got this. I've got this right yeah you have some good days and you have some bad days um, so now what you know what, what's driving me what's your real purpose what's my real purpose and our real purpose at Jam Training my real purpose as a person is really to try, try and help as many people as possible uh, to change their lives in a healthy way whether it's you know someone needs to focus on nutrition they need to try, focus on exercise or just even listening to them and really understanding where they're coming from from a mental health point of view cool. and sharing my story and if that that seems to help people you know people who look at me and they're like they think you know they see me in January and they see me and they think that I've never had a bad day in my life yet alone like overcome depression or, or live with depression and had and commit suicide and someone saved me so um, yeah so if that's if that helps anybody then that's amazing yeah that's huge yeah it's massive so the one thing I found well what one of many things I've found is that happiness a lot of people are like, if I get this done, I'll be happy. If I go do this, I'll be happy. If right. I get this, I'll be happy. If yeah. I make this, I'll be happy. Mm-hmm. Do you, what's your take on it? I think society does a very good job and the media does a very good job of pulling us in different directions. So we honestly believe if we have that, we're going to be happy. And, and we live in a material world. Like I'm wearing Nike. I like nice things. Um, but it isn't, it isn't who I am. Right, I, there's certain things that I like to like to buy, like to purchase. But I think, like, if you look at somebody's coming through university, how did we choose that course? How did we go onto that onto that onto that um, route? Maybe we 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 were told by our parents when we were very very young this would be a good route to go. But we don't have a real and really strong connection to. If we don't have a really strong connection to that goal, we ain't we're not going to be happy, right? right? So the things that we choose to fill ourselves our lives with aren't going to make us happy either. And I think we're governed, unless we separated ourselves from society, to choose things that the media tells us, okay, you need a body like this, you need to go and eat here, you need to buy this, this is going to make you happy. Unless you can find out who you are and what drives you and what, you know, those things aren't going to make you happy. And so what's it for you? For me, it really is just being training, being healthy, uh, traveling, love traveling, and I love spending time with my family. Like I really do. So it's just the simple stuff. It's going back to basics. It was like understanding who I was in those situations and, and accepting myself for all the flaws that I have, accepting what happened in my childhood and whatever. You know, everyone has a childhood. Accepting things the way they were, the choices that I made, and beginning to like yourself, and then surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Like cool. really, like just trying to trying to surround yourself with people that can drive you and inspire you to be better versions of yourself. Awesome. And then really, you know, the idea of um, exercising, training, traveling, these are things that are in your control every day. It's not like this giant three-year thing that you can't touch today. You're right. It's a day in, day out. You can kind of be happy as you go. Yeah, exactly. And and also, find it like finding the right partner. Like, I have to be honest, without Jana, if I hadn't met Jana, 
like my life would not be whole. It's crazy, but like you sort of have to be happy and understand who you are before you can sort of meet the right person, I feel. And then when I met Jana, like everything made sense. Like the next rest of my life made sense, right? And, and obviously I can work with her and I'm very, very lucky that we can share that as well. So obviously finding a partner, making sure you have a good, strong purpose and understanding who you are and accepting yourself for all your flaws. Yeah, yeah. which is big. So on that note, what's one of your flaws? Um, I have a bunch, um, <laughs> like I do. Like yeah, so, um, same here. Yeah, like I like believe it or not, like I have I have a little bit of a lazy bone in me. Like like in the, not in in the sense of work, but when it comes to pushing myself, I'm I'm almost forty years old. I've got a couple of injuries, and I can tell you right now, I've lost my motivation for training. Right now, I'm like struggling for motivation, and people be like, "Wow, John Mills can't can't train." So <laughs> it doesn't look like. But it, it happens. <laughs> no, but it happens to all of us, right? So it's how I you know. So understanding that if I let this seep in. I'm going to be sitting, not in this car, but in another car in a month from now, in the same place. So how, I've got to work out how to overcome that. So I can be a little bit lazy when it comes to my fitness as well sometimes, and I just need to make sure that I'm, I'm inspired by the people around me. So I'll go to Jana and we'll talk about it, because I'm carrying a couple of injuries. Yeah, and uh, and also trying to do too much. Jana will tell you, I've always got all these different uh, like projects on the go. Like we're working on, I'm working on an invention. We've got the fitness junction, we've got jam training, we've got a bunch of other things that we want to get going. And actually, sometimes, just focusing on one or two things is hard for me. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah I think that's hard for lots of people. Mm-hmm. And this like kind of idea that multitasking is a talent. It isn't. No. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. And I don't Jan- think anybody is. Jan is pretty good at it, but she wears herself down. I've seen her do it. She does three or four things at once, and I'm like, wow, you need to calm down. That's crazy. And I'm thinking, Sh- should I be doing more of that? Because I can't do that. I can't. I'm trying to figure out how to simplify everything. Mm. Yeah, me easy. too. Me too. Yeah. Especially when you've got other people relying on you. You really want to make it very, very straightforward as to what you're doing so they can follow suit, right? Yeah. In a certain way. That's cool. Yeah. So, uh, one of the last pieces is if you had the opportunity to go back to, you know, yourself, call it 29 years old. Yeah. Um, is there like a thing you keep in mind or a mantra you kind of have in between your ears or you, you know, just remind yourself of on a day in day out basis or every once in a while when things aren't going the way you yeah. want, that kind of keeps you on track? Yeah. I think, uh, being thankful for where you are and, and how fortunate I am. Like I'm fortunate to be here. Like I said, we've, we've touched on that already. Uh, and I'm fortunate to have the life that I have. Like, and sometimes we get so uh, tunneled into, wow, this is a I mean, things are things are going so bad. That's not working. That's not working. I'm too busy. But I actually, step back and look. Oh, I'm not, I got a house. I got a lovely wife. I got two businesses. We get to travel. I got a wonderful family. Like, so I have a shit day. What's the worst thing? Oh, oh that that project doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It costs us a bit of money, but we're not going to die, right? And the whole point is, I think, just taking a step back and appreciating what you have uh, on a daily basis. Getting up in the morning and instead of being like, oh, not another morning. It's like, be thankful for it. Like, I'm up. I've got a day. I've got another day that somebody gave me. Um, Yeah, that's how I sort of try and live my life. If I check out a little bit. Yeah, that's epic. Yeah. And it takes that time. I think a lot of, I mean, for me, it was really, uh, people had told me for years, journaling, journal, journal, journal. And I was like, come on, like, I got shit to do, yeah. I don't have time yeah, yeah. to stop and journal, uh, but then I went to a conference, and, like, I don't know, eight out of 15 speakers I saw were, like, if you're not journaling, you're losing money, if you're not journaling, you don't know yourself, if you're not, like, I was right. just like, okay, okay, I'll journal, you journal. and then it's been, it's been probably the most powerful uh, tool that I've had for self-development, outside of, like, in just, you know, putting myself into a massive learning yeah. experience That's everywhere cool. I go, but... Understanding, you know, what's what I'm going through, what I'm grateful for, why I feel the way I feel about things has just been yeah amazing. But checking out to take that time to look back. You're right. Reflection is such a big thing. We're so, we're, especially in this society, we're so like focused on going there quickly without enjoying that moment that we've just we've just spent however long to develop that moment, and yet we're already looking for the next moment. So having the journaling to then go back and go, oh, hang on, well, you know, a bunch of things happened today. And well, it's pretty cool. And the interesting thing about it is journaling. The gratitude journal, just like as part of the things I journal about. Right, cool. If I do it consistently uh, over a course of time, like you know, one or uh, you know, whatever, once a day or once every two days, yeah, I start to going into like I'm grateful for the grass that I walk on with my bare feet because I'm like I've gone through all this other stuff that's like really big family, kids, mm-hmm. business, team, partnerships, yeah, yeah. and then I'm like, wow, you know, there's really cool stuff. Yeah, around us all the time. Like crazy. Yeah, like seriously, like you're driving a nice, like a nice Subaru here. We talked about how amazing this car is, and uh, again, like, like we just take it for granted. Getting it, 
point it and off yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So true. And and the same thing, yeah. Like I'm gr- being grateful for the things that you have is so important. And I think journaling is great, and it's something that I can do more of. I did bits of it. Uh, I'm the same way. I'm scattered. Okay. But like, I do have a black book, and people see me walking around with it, and they're like, "What is that?" Black it's not book? full of phone numbers. Is that <laughs> is that our next workout? That looks scary. <laughs> you know? Okay, so I don't normally ask this question because people don't normally bring it up. But what's your next? What's your invention? Can you talk about it? I've been told not to talk too much about it. It's a rehabilitate a rehabilitation tool, uh, and uh, I don't know. Like we really like it. There's a guy. Uh, me and Jana worked on it originally, and then me and this uh, this guy just happened to just fall into the, the same room together, and he happens to have a factory, and he has the raw materials, and all of a sudden I'm like, wow, we can do this. So I pick up the prototype in a couple of weeks, and we'll play around with it. But yeah. Watch this space, hopefully. Okay, all right. So then, how about uh, when it's ready? We'll yeah, bring it back. Oh, one hundred percent. And like, you know what? Like, get you in to try it out. Like, I'm gonna get. Um, I'm probably gonna get Craig, your friend, in. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Craig Ely to uh, come and check it out because it'll be something that he will be able to give us some feedback on. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it sort of gives you an idea of where where we're going with it. Sure. And yeah, and I'll be more than happy to come back. And uh, if you think I'm interesting enough, and you guys want to watch more of us then just do it yeah or if you want us to see like singing karaoke I was gonna I was gonna say if you ask me to sing I'm not coming in because you don't want to do some oasis or something no no (laughs) not happening all right cool thanks for doing this John yeah it's nice to nice to do it it's a pleasure it's a pleasure to uh you know to be in this situation with my friend all right cheers John all right thanks guys bye